yeah, thank you, Emmeline and Eric, for joining today um, at Arose. We've got um, organisations in our membership and kind of the broader community that represent both universities, schools and, and other um, startups. So really keen to hear more about the Space and Earth Challenge and yourselves. Um, and, yeah, what, what it is, um, how can students kind of participate here and, um, yeah, what you're hoping to achieve from it. Over to you guys. Great, thank you so much. Um, I am uh, going to put the share. It's just a slideshow. How can I have an iPad? So I'm hoping that you can actually uh, see the, the slides. Um, yes. Awesome. Yep. Great. So um, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll just give a little bit of an introduction about ourselves personally, um, why space base and the, the motivation for the challenge and then a specific uh, challenge and its mechanics. Um, so that's sort of like how we'll, we'll go through the, the briefing. So uh, again, uh, thank you so much for, for um, uh, being in the audience today and to learn about the space challenge. Um, I'm Emmeline Pat Dalstrom, originally from the Philippines, uh, immigrated to the US and moved to New Zealand about six years ago um, with a background in physics and space science, uh, but really worked more on program development and operations over like three decades um, in the more in the, I guess, new space um, uh, era, um, focusing on like space education, but also on all the way from space tourism to uh, startups that are working on landers and rovers on the moon. Um, yeah, and I'm Eric Dahlstrom from the US. Uh, I, my background's astronomy and space engineering, and I worked as a contractor to NASA on the design of the space station uh, and shuttle safety and some other big projects. And uh, then uh, in, I was teaching at uh, International Space University. Uh, I'm I'm still on the faculty there, and the uh, uh, and also in in California was helping a lot of space startups. And uh, our third uh, team member is actually uh, Usman uh, Iftikhar, who is also an ISU alumni, and he's based in Melbourne. So he's the Australian uh, side of the team. Um, has a lot of uh, basically experience and actually is an award-winning um, young um, entrepreneur who's helped uh, migrant uh, entrepreneurs in, in Australia as well, just like in, in general. And uh, while we're working here in New Zealand, um, we still keep basically our global space networks and affiliations, uh, specifically through the International Space University, uh, Singularity University, and, and also the, the NASA uh, Frontier Development uh, Lab. Um, and as I mentioned, we moved to New Zealand about six years ago. Our basically, and we created space base because our focus really is what we call the democratization of access to space, um, where we think that there's still a gap between like spacefaring nations and the rest of the world in really benefiting and find and and looking at the opportunities of the space industry to really solve either like problems on Earth and and also for like you know future um, other space ecosystems uh, that will will happen um, for kind of like the good of humanity, and so for us um, our our main focus is to make sure that the rest of the world does not get left behind. Um, and we do this through education, entrepreneurship, and community building. Um, and so uh, again, uh, we define space, of course, uh, very broadly, but um, at least for space-based, we really focus on leveraging space technology to solve uh, grand challenges here on Earth. And as you can see from the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs, um, all of those UN SDGs today are actually um, uh, being addressed by uh, space uh, technology and, of course, one of those is monitoring the health of planet Earth, which is the, one of the biggest motivation for uh, the space challenge that uh, that we're running. Um, and and again, in terms of uh, what how we look at the global space economy and the space industry today, uh, it's no longer just rockets and rocketships, but really um, everything uh, along the the kind of like the supply chain to um, the the different sort of segments upstream downstream uh, of the actual uh, industry. 
And a big motivation for us uh, is the uh, advances in exponential technologies, basically uh, ones driven by computing, uh, that uh, since the Apollo era, it's computers have increased by in power by a factor of a trillion. And, and that's affected all these different industries of, from you know AI and robotics and biotech and and also uh, and and space sensors uh, the uh, the the sensors on the small satellites have gotten more powerful for and uh, you know looking at different wavelength bands and uh, radar and tracking radio signals as well as uh, optical images and so uh, and and then also the the uh, the access to the satellite data through NASA and European programs and also this analysis software has gone to open source so it's it's uh, gone from fifty thousand dollars to free and your laptop computer is more powerful than what we used to use at NASA for remote sensing specialists and so all these things have have just uh, lowered the barriers and increased the power of uh, individuals and students to to take on big challenges. And so uh, at, at Space Base, over the years, we've been trying all these different methods to try to help develop a space ecosystem in New Zealand and, and in other countries. And uh, But one that we often uh, focus on is our challenge competitions, where, where we set a big prize and give people time to work on it. Uh, and there's a long history of, of prize challenges in aviation and space, um, dating back to you know almost 100 years to to Lindbergh and the start of the aviation industry. Um, but the, one of the benefits of the setting up a prize challenge is that you get all these different teams with alternative different scenarios. You're also helping to train in you know capacity building. You're training these teams. And you're building all these connections and and uh, uh, collaborations. So uh, in the past, we've this is our we've done uh, we've three three uh, three challenges before, and we'll and this is our fourth one that we're doing. The um, uh, in the past, we've had ones that looked at monitoring uh, pollution on from space uh, on, in on the soil or water. We've had ones looking at uh, monitoring carbon sequestration of in forests and and uh, and other mechanisms, um, and we've also looked at uh, coral health from satellite data, and and so we we uh, in the past with our uh, we've had you know all these different uh, opportunities and solutions coming in and and partnerships building them up in in New Zealand, and then we uh, and. Uh, this is examples from our previous New Zealand challenges. Uh, and then we, we broadened the challenge it, out to New Zealand, Australia, and the Pacific Islands. Uh, and so we have uh, yeah, we have many different uh, approaches and different solutions. Um, and some of the examples of people, what people have tried on these uh, in, in the, responding to our challenges, is we've had people, uh, you know, high school groups monitoring uh, coral health. Um, we've had uh, people running around with lasers, uh, measuring trees in Australia and comparing it with laser scanners from space. Uh, and we had uh, monitoring pollution, but based on changing colors and lakes and, uh, or, or even down to counting trees with, with uh, satellites to, to determine how much carbon is sequestered. Now, in the big motivation for the last, you know, couple of times, of course, has been the uh, climate change, global warming, and we're all aware of of this with the uh, greenhouse gases trapping the energy and the amount and what we're seeing already with, you know, the uh, uh, putting adding all this energy into their system is, you know, just changing weather patterns and the moving uh, water from and creating creating droughts and flooding. Uh, this is all uh, coming from these the greenhouse gases we're adding, which is mainly carbon dioxide, but it's but methane is a big piece of this uh, and is is actually a fast acting 
uh, and powerful greenhouse gas. And uh, we, as we have different speakers from uh, uh, science speakers in our in our presentations, we I keep stealing their charts so that I can show you some more details. But the uh, but we have um, this is this is the reflected sunlight uh, spectrum, and uh, and you you can detect methane at some here in the near infrared. But the the real warming effect is out here in the far infrared, where it traps the heat coming out of the earth. And so this is where the methane and the carbon dioxide is is trapping the the infrared radiation and, and heating up the earth. Um, so so the, uh, the the focus on methane is that because it's it's actually more powerful than carbon dioxide, it's been identified as uh, by the IPCC as, as a near-term opportunity as if you can reduce the methane, you can buy time for, for transitioning away from, from the uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, and so you can, uh, some of the sources are from agriculture or, or industri industry sites or even landfills, for example. And they're they're big, you know, uh, big emitters in the big countries around the world, uh, and and so it's a it's a global issue, um, and this is sort of a snapshot of the the strongest emissions around the world, uh, with with a lot of the uh, in the oil producing areas, for example, or the pipelines, and if we zoom in on ours, it, we have, you know, some significant sources in. Um, and you know, like uh, uh, you're probably well aware that there's there uh, that my, uh, past past mining ish activity is also a source of methane. But it's but if we can actually reduce the emissions, but also potentially capture what is a valuable resource, is, is, is are these methane. So it's it's um, there's a, a lot of, uh, on both sides. People are. Are interested in in reducing these emissions and in helping to identify them. Um, the the uh, the this is a methane cycle with the natural part over here in green, uh, emissions from wetlands and and uh, absorption in in uh, in forests and and the ocean. Um, and this is the ad addition from the uh, over on the left is from the human sources. And most of that is is absorbed in the system, but it's there's still this growth of 10 million tons per year, and and that keeps on growing uh, pretty steadily. And so, uh, in New Zealand, it's a special uh, special case because uh, New Zealand does pretty well on the carbon dioxide emissions, but it's it's half of its emissions are in uh, methane coming mainly from agriculture. And so the New Zealand is, government has done all this effort to uh, measure individual sheep, putting them in boxes and putting little devices around their necks to measure the methane emissions or, or measure uh, from pastures. But what you'd really like to do is get a real real time measurement from space um, and down to the pasture level. And so this is uh, a snapshot of uh, the lower resolution of, of uh, of methane emission sites from New Zealand, and and there is a lot of uh, the agriculture intensive areas. So that there's a lot of satellites that have been adjusted to uh, detect methane. Uh, some designed for methane, some some just modified. Uh, and there's uh, a number of these sites satellites are providing free data, either through NASA or the or the Europeans, and uh, and that's where we're trying to make that available in the in the challenge for the um, for the students and to participate to to examine what the sources of methane are. Um, the on the broadest scale, there's Sentinel five five P that is uh, doing global coverage. There are commercial companies like Greenhouse Gas Set. That provide really specific targets, uh, looking at specific objects that uh, with the commercial data, and and in next year we'll be launching a methane set, which is 
a joint New Zealand uh, US project to and the the methane set team is very interested in where they should target their satellite to look for different sources of methane that's that's a motivation for the the actual text of our problem statement which is using satellite data in combination with other data sources help develop scientific methods to identify target areas of methane emissions on earth so the problem area is is definitely um, uh, stated very broadly, so that you can actually, um, for any of the teams, they can either focus on uh, industrial waste or or um, agriculture or or landfills, depending on where the most um, you know ch uh, the challenge is in those particular countries. And so uh, I'm just going to give a little bit of a nutshell of of the process. Uh, of the competition. And so the competition really has like three stages. And one is to get into the incubator. The, this, the second is to uh, actually down select for the finalists. And then the third part is for the finalists to actually compete in a, in a, like a demo and, and pitch session uh, on 15 March, 2024. Uh, applications are, for the proposal to get into the incubator are open today until the 31st of August and it's and it's free. Uh, so in terms of the, the uh, again, the categories, there's two categories. One is high school or secondary. Uh, and then the second one is a uh, university and startups of which um, just for simplicity's sake, we just said that for startups, it's basically a team that's less than or no more than like 20 people. Uh, and then the only requirement really is that uh, you need to be living in either New Zealand, Australia, the Pacific Islands, um, and the Philippines. It doesn't matter what kind of visa you have as long as you, that, that's kind of like where, where, where you live. Um, and in terms of the virtual incubator, so we're looking to down select uh, to about like 20 teams that will go into the, the incubator. Uh, they'll have like webinar sessions, you know, access to, to data and, and platform. Uh, it's gonna have like a bespoke mentorship and, and advisement for, for those who, who need it. Um, and then uh, we will also have some cloud compute um, uh, services that will be included in that uh, that platform, so that it would, they would be it would be easy for them to collect access like uh, satellite data. Uh, the incubator then will run between October to February uh, 2024, of which there is a there's a uh, holiday gap uh, in there. Um, once they uh, they actually um, finish the the incubator process, then that would then get them to the second stage where they would actually submit the full application. And, and again, the full application is very simple. It's just a five minute video demonstration of their solution and also a presentation deck um, describing their solution. Um, what we're doing here is we're down selecting to three finalists per um, category. Um, which will then be invited to pitch uh, uh, on March 2024. Once you get into the finalist um, uh, sort of like stage, you're already guaranteed that you're going to get some kind of um, of uh, prize. So the final stage is on the 15th of March 2024, and um, basically this is a pitch and demo session for both categories and. Um, the prizes are like 25k New Zealand dollars for the grand prize winner in university, and then 8k for the um, uh, secondary level, and then the um, the finalists also get some uh, small cash prize um, for, for yeah for each of the finalists. Uh, this is just to, to show kind of like the timeline of where we are at the moment. So basically, right now. We're certainly recruiting for teams uh, since May when we kicked off the uh, the competition, and 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 this is sort of like why we're kind of like reaching out to different partners and collaborators all throughout the Asia Pacific uh, kind of like region uh, to help us um, basically get the 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 opportunity out there, um, and then uh, once it closes. We'll have an evaluation period for uh, September, and then the incubator kind of like starts between October and February, and and the finals uh, is in 
is in May. Oh, sorry, in March. Uh, just to note, um, this is our current sponsors as well. I mean, we have like three um, agencies, including the Australian Space Agency, uh, New Zealand, and um, the Philippine Space Agency that are actually helping us uh, here, uh, as well as different uh, philanthropic organizations, um, uh, actually investor groups, um, all the way to um, universities and uh, government entities uh, in the Pacific region. So actually, that's, I think, the end of, of the uh, briefing. Uh, I, I hope uh, we gave you a little bit of an understanding of um, how the challenge um, uh, goes and the kind of like the motivation for it. So uh, we're, we're certainly uh, happy to answer any uh, questions that you might have. Thank you. Uh, I think, um, yeah, it's a great presentation and um, certainly hadn't appreciate the the amount of impact that methane has over CO2 as well. So um, I think um, also noticing, you know, the dots around Australia is obviously oil and gas, but a huge amount around the coal mines, you know, the surface and underground on, on the East Coast as well. So kind of a wide, um, yeah, focus area. I'll hand over to people here in the room um, for any questions that you may have. Um, hoping we can get some teams, um, you know, either associated with the school, Joseph yeah. Banks or, or Curtin, and Anthony. Yeah, yeah you know, really yeah. good presentation. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, I think that is very interesting to a couple of teams that we have at the university. Um, so we've got uh, a data science institute and also a centre which manages the crop diseases um, through our School of Agriculture, which mm -hmm. this will be well suited for. So I'll definitely be sharing this with them. Um, just a question around that initial submission for uh, August 31st. Do you have a sense of what that includes or um, sort of how sort of lengthy that is? Yeah, so um, actually not, uh, it's also very simple. So what they're what we're looking for is uh, basically answering two questions. One is like, who's on your team? So uh, uh, basically they, they send uh, either resumes or CVs of, or bios of uh, the team members that's on the team. Um, and then the, the more substantial one is really like a document or a proposal, uh, which really just like states um, what do they intend to, to do? So which, which particular problem they're, they're want to focus on either it's in, on the agriculture side or, or, or in, uh, industrial side, what they intend, uh, what like potential technology that they intend to, to work on. So I, again, this is a proposal, so it's not a solution. They just uh, need to express what they think they would want to work on, or what their kind of like the schedule and, uh, and their project kind of like timeline uh, uh, would be, um, and, and essentially what their needs are as well. Um, when for for working on, on on the solution, so that's sort of like the the main essence of the 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 proposal. Um, and there's a uh, I I don't I guess I didn't put uh, on there the kind of like there's a judging criteria that is also on the website um, that uh, and we'll be using the judging criteria for all of the stages of the competition. And essentially, it's a uh, you know, uh, are you using you know sat uh, space technology, <laughs> which is which is one. Um, the the other is like, uh, is your um, is your solution you know scientifically scientifically sound? Um, how easy is it to implement? Um, how um, uh, what was the I'm I'm blanking on the <laughs> the other parts of the. Uh, the, oh, so so the and then um, for the stage two and three, of course, they they would also be uh, um, evaluated on their prototype um, as well. Um, let's see how how innovative it is. It like is it new um, or uh, or are are they um, basically improving on an, an already existing kind of like research. Uh, and then we also give points to, or, or um, additional points, if um, the solution, you can actually already see that there's impact that happens like 
pretty quickly. So like within the, the next three years, um, if they're collaborating with other um, organizations is actually um, uh, also uh, uh, an added um, point. Um, if they're creatively integrating, for example, potentially other uh, other industries um, in, in their solution. Uh, and then uh, the lastly is like the team composition. Does the team actually got what it takes to kind of like get it to the finish line? So those are the, 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 um, the main kind of like uh, criteria and they, they're certainly on the, on the website as well in, in detail. Sounds really good, awesome. Thanks for that. Thanks. Um, just looking at the website, um, I think uh, we could definitely get a team together from Joseph Banks, but something that might be a bit of a barrier is that it doesn't really show how it might be modified for high school teams to engage with the, um, so if I'm looking at the categories and um, looking at the requirements, like in terms of things like background on team members, that's something that schools wouldn't necessarily hand over in terms of privacy data and all of those sorts of things. So I'm just wondering whether like an example or a previous year's um, proposal as an example for schools um, so they can see an example of what the, the level is and the standard is in terms of the proposal. Um, so then they're able to work with kids to say, here's what other kids produced. Um, and so then they can use that as a, uh, can my kids engage with this what year group um, and the teachers would be able to get a bit of an idea does that make sense yeah no it does, it definitely makes sense um so at the moment we don't have an a, like an, an actual proposal example because they they were all um of course uh, uh, submitted in confidence um yeah from from the past however i think one like immediate thing that that uh, you can actually uh, do is to watch the finals of like last year's um uh, like the high school event and yeah. you can already see from that there's at least uh three um teams and of course the winning team was 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 also on there who yeah. uh, you can see what they've actually produced and what um like in 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 summary what they actually uh, created mm -hmm. uh so you'll give a, you, you'll get an understanding of like the level of what they uh, came up with, which of course is certainly different from the level of like the university and startups. I mean, we're we're using the same problem area this time around. Last time we actually did two, so yep. it's a different problem area for for the high school. Mm -hmm. But so it's the same problem area, but at the same time, we for sure are judging that the judges for the high school is different from the judges from university, and yep. uh, they're kind of like the level of expectation is also different. Um, okay. Even though the judging criteria is the same, like the the kind of like the level of expectation um, for sure should be at the level of the the, the high school level if you're judging for uh, for that. So, so, that's do you, so do you expect that the students are writing the proposal or is the school or the teacher writing the proposal initially to get into the incubator? So, uh, if I remember correctly from the last times, it's actually the students that are writing the proposal that are actually mentored by their by their um, either uh, teachers or, or or mentors. So so yeah, um, the win for example, the winning team had no mentors at all. Yes. Yeah. So that they they basically wrote everything and they created their own um, uh, everything from like the high school one. And yeah, um, and and certainly we don't. We're not interested in, you know, uh, personal private details. It's yeah. more like, uh, you know, uh, this person is going to be worrying about the the programming or something like that. Or that's is, their kind of like their strength is in saying, the programming this side. This person will or... be working on the research uh, about the topic or something. Yeah. So yeah. it's so. Yeah, so one other thing that, um, uh, again, uh, to, to answer also your question is like, I have been also thinking about this and um, I was, I'm hoping to actually interview the winner from last year from the high school side to just yep. at least give an, an idea of uh, their experience as well and, and how they kind of uh, and, because we just did that and, for- and, Yeah, we did that for the- For the university level. So like- And, the, yeah, and so, so then we'll make, that video available on our um, yeah. our website. Yeah, but okay. yeah, yeah. But the good idea about the uh, examples, you know, we we need yeah. something to 
to encourage people to to put in applications uh, with their yeah. ideas. Yeah, I think um, because it because it's pitched at the higher level on the website, I think a lot of teachers would look at that and go, I don't necessarily understand mm. all of that. So I'm not sure yeah. how I would then translate that into a to help support my students write a proposal yeah. for them. Right. Um, so, and that's then, just from a purely looking at it from a school perspective in terms yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think like our kids have done some work with Curtin looking at using satellite technology for like things like coral bleaching and all of those sorts of things. So it's definitely something that's within their scope yeah. um, of what they could tackle. Um, but I think it, because it's a, the kids writing the first thing to get into the incubator, um, I'm not sure that the time, the six weeks will, I'm not sure that I'll be able to generate much Mm. other I schools think. to be able to jump into this one um but yeah. certainly in the future um you know like if that's scaffolded and and teachers can plan that in um but we'll we'll see if we can't get a, a group in, interested at least from from joseph banks yeah yeah i mean that would be great and um I'm also, uh, since I'm already reaching out to the winners from last year, I mean, mm -hmm. I can also ask them whether they're willing to, to share yeah. basically the proposal that they that they gave. Because yeah. that's for sure we, I mean, if that's the case, then then we can also sh share it. Yeah, yeah. Just as an example for kids to look at what the level yeah. is. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, I wonder, Liz, whether it's worthwhile kind of reaching out to Curtin and, and UWA just to say, is there any students there that are willing to be a technical mentor or some kind of mentor to the, the high school yep. again um, yep. because yeah I think that's kind of the power of using the consortium as well and means yep. university students can put in their own team and they can also help ensure yeah. that yeah young kids yep. are giving theirs up. Yep. Yeah I think I think if we look at some of our bin our kids then yeah we'd yep. probably find some things that we could do there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. D Dario, I see you're online. I'm not sure where you joined in. We have recorded this, but yeah, just wondering any thoughts that you have. I know uh, it's a huge focus on outreach and kids. So yeah. yeah hi, good, good morning to everyone. Um, yeah, I've been listening to the presentation and, and I was just um, going through the website and, and, and you know, I had the si similar concerns uh, as well about the, uh, in you know, how this can uh, combine or line with our program from the Energy Club, you know, um, especially because we're targeting uh, year nine and 10, we might have some year 11s and 12, but um, I, I'm trying to think how we can connect the dots there, right? I mean, it might, yeah. it might be something much more simple that we can do in that case. Um, the, the timing is very short. I mean, it is, it's, it's challenging, you know, to bring this to the school because we, uh, we go four times a year. So, uh, so we have to, align that with a session where we go there and we let them know what the program is about and, and, and inviting them to participate. So I'm thinking that maybe next year we're going to be better prepared, uh, but what we can do this year is just uh, make them aware about this possibility. To, uh, we, I think we have 27 schools at the moment that participate oh, wow. in our program. So, so make them aware about the possibility and, and, and in every class we have kids that are going to be more or less interested and then, you know, they can follow that up but um also i think that probably if, if you can have a, a particular uh like a link or a page or something that is specific for schools for secondary schools then that would be awesome because then uh they can know about what it's all about and you know how do they align that especially with the teacher i mean if you if you have the teacher to go there and, and look into all of the the requests and specs and say, oh you know i have another ten thousand things to do so put, <laughs> yeah. there, put that at the bottom of the of their priorities. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it, it absolutely aligns with the uh, in, in energy with the uh, areas of, um, well, carbon emissions, you know, that, that's, that's the first thing that come to mind. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there would be other things, but um, for the time being, probably, you know, just generating that awareness will be something that we can do. Good. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, and, and, um, and, and also just to probably emphasize as well that, uh, yeah, don't look at the the proposal as a, like a big, <laughs> big undertaking. Uh, because like, I mean, I've seen some of uh, the the proposals that have come in like uh, even at the last minute. Um, uh, and the the reason why we do the incubator is is really that's the main purpose of it is to kind of like 
and they will pivot. Uh, even the, the whatever the proposal that they put in in the beginning, they will pivot. But when they get to the end of the incubator, um, that's sort of like how they could um, uh, incorporate and 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 also apply what they've learned uh, from the sessions to make their like final application. So the final application, which is in February of of twenty fifth, is really the 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 thing that they're competing on. Um, and it's just that the proposal is just to make sure that you're kind of like your team is good to to go into the incubator. I, I also should mention there's a back door, which is you oh, don't, yeah, you don't right. have to go to the incubator. Um, you can you can just go in and submit something in February um, yeah. and and win the prize from surprise everybody. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you think that your team's like really like, I mean, it's good, uh, good without any help. Uh, which actually uh, in 2019, there was a high school uh, team um, in, in New Zealand where they didn't go into the incubator, they got in uh, uh, and, and went uh, and Two basically- were a finalist. Yeah, yeah. They, they basically wowed all of the, the judges because for some reason they, they were so, uh, so spot on that, um, yeah, uh, they, yeah, they, they basically leapfrog. <laughs> That, the whole process. that was back when we had uh, government agencies competing also. <laughs> <laughs> so. so it sounds like yeah, then, that might Dar be Dario, yeah, maybe Dario. it is that you just need to get your name in just to be be in it. Um, and really the work happens kind of post that, um, yeah. you know, through, through the incubator. We've got another one of these sessions set up for next Monday. Um, so really encourage you to kind of share it with yeah, other teachers, with students that want to join. Um, and, you know, it's the Zoom link is there for anyone, anyone to jump on um, because, yeah, I'd love to have other people. Because, yeah, to me, if I was in school, I'd be daunted about how on earth do I put anything together? I know nothing about satellites. What am I going to do? So maybe if there's more of those kind of people online to kind of ask those questions to help for Emmeline and Eric to kind of help appease them around, no, this is kind of how you get to the start line and then we'll help you and help you learn. Um, also, yeah, obviously, if if there are students at Curtin or UWA that want to help be mentors and, you know, we can try and kind of see who's got capacity um, to do that. But, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe kind of think through, is there anyone else that you just flick the invite on to to, to get to the the door next week and i mean I, yeah, yeah i'm not yeah. trying to push you into it and you know the no, students no, no, you know I, everything better than me but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that and and um i think that in my experience you you do need to have either a teacher or one of the mentors that is also passionate about it mm -hmm. to, to drive it through and, and be more consistent um mm -hmm. if i look at the examples that we have with the students in the classroom today i mean the, the, you know they're doing one thing one day and the next day, you know, the next five minutes they want to do something else. So, so you know, yeah, yeah. you know, trying to, to, that. to maintain the focus and the yeah, consistency. Yeah, and, you know. yeah, so so we do have we have like um 40 mentors that are going to the schools and, and they're all members of the club and they're all volunteer. I'm pretty sure that we're gonna find some, you know, space and enthusiast there, you know, satellite or someone who who, you know, uh, has a good connection with their class and then putting the team together, you know, that, that probably would be a way that I can imagine it would happen in our case. So uh, I'll extend the invitation um, uh, to Michelle, who is also our, our program coordinator, and uh, and for her to distribute that among the uh, schools and the mentors. And and let's see what happens with the, with the next yeah. uh, presentation, mm -hmm. if we have some interest yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've just... Sorry, I just jumped on and registered so I could see what the requirements were. There is that um, downloading the blank entry PDF for reference. It might be worth just popping that on the website so that people can see what's required um, since you already have it before. Mm. So then that way they know that it's actually not that onerous looking at the, the bits that are there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have I can good, see the criteria. Yeah, yeah, and some of those things. So you've already got that. If that just went on the website, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. No, that 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 uh, we can certainly do uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Great. And Anetha, did you have anything? Uh, no, nothing else. Um, I think maybe when we're looking at um, 
the future or next year or something, it might be also worth looking at running a workshop around this, um, involving students and mentors from universities. Um, so we run um, workshops with students and um, university students with high school students around challenges. So it might be worth looking at something like that um, if we want to pursue this, you know, in the next couple of years as well. Yeah. But. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's great. Because like for, for us also, we, I mean, uh, so we've been doing these challenges to, in New Zealand, but prior to that, I've actually been uh, connected with Singularity University, which has done challenges all over the place, all over the world. And so for, for us, um, being able to help uh, others actually be trained on actually doing challenges is also something that we're very interested in um, because it's for, for, I, I think it's a really great methodology of uh, accelerating innovation and uh, creating impact in many different ways. Exactly and, and that collaboration piece um, you know gives much more um, makes space much more realistic for everyone and shows them a different side of innovation and space. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I also love the idea of connecting the university and the and the high school uh mm, level. Yeah. Uh because the I mean the the best way to learn, you know, something as a university student is to have to teach, teach it, it to somebody else. Somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when we're well, we're also hearing that uh, uh also uh potential, like even in the Pacific Island um uh, countries, that's uh they, they see that as a potential for helping the, the high schools. Uh, make it feel more like uh yeah that it's not gone <laughs> yeah yeah might, yeah. Might, might help them think about what they might want to do after school too yeah cool. all right if there's no other questions we can call it off now but just, um just a comment and uh, before we go michelle and um it just occurred to me we have the uh next gen um like an expo day we uh, in November that so we have like uh, around 300 or 400 kids coming to ECU and we have different booths of um, of companies that they, they 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 showcase you know some type of technology that you have some you know an activity or uh, you know 3D goggles etc so you know we have like 20 or 30 companies coming in and, and doing different things organizations as well so that could be also an opportunity to promote um, this initiative uh and, and maybe if, if you have some uh, videos or some demonstrations on a computer or something we can put it on tv with with a banner you know that that's probably the only thing that you need and and uh, and have those, those kids you know going through that big form of what it is and seeing examples of how it is done so probably that's another uh, opportunity there they want to mention See. yeah, yeah thank it'd, you. it'd be great if there were uh local teams that you could actually uh <laughs> oh that would be fantastic yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's great. I mean, I guess in, in in my experience, it always better when when kids talk to to kids and they explain, you know, and they and they get engaged in that in that way. It's, oh, you know, these kids they did it, and this is the way they did it, and that you know, they get more motivated rather than if you have an adult, you know, coming with a slight PowerPoint presentation, and you know, yeah, that's not the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, great idea. Great. Ooh.